Today, we're gonna to talk about how we monitor our boat, which is in Titusville, Florida, from our home near Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Join us as we install a Victron Servo GX, a Simply Safe home monitoring system, and our new T-Mobile home internet. One look in your eyes and I find it. When you leave in my mind, I rewind it. When you got it this good, you don't fight it. Well, part of this new um, connectivity upgrade we're doing on the boat is that we traded in our T-Mobile hotspot for this new T-Mobile internet. It uh, costs the same, 50 bucks a month, and supposedly this is 5G, it's supposed to be faster, and it's unlimited instead of limited to 100 gig. Um, we'll see how it works. Uh, I think it's, it's going to be better than what we have, I know that, it costs the same, so there we go. Now, as you can see, the upload and download speeds are, are really pretty good on the new system. In fact, they're better than I thought. Now, a lot of friends of ours who have boats are opting to get the Starlink system right now. Now, technically, it's not really available for boats while they're moving. Supposedly, that breaks some sort of regulation and Starlink can have you disconnected for it. So, I'm sure they're going to work that out in the future. Right now, this system that we're putting in is about a third the cost. It's only $50 a month and the startup is only $50 for the box, whereas on Starlink it's $600 and some dollars to get that antenna up on the roof. So we hope this is going to work good for us now. We'll see how it does in the Bahamas, and maybe in the future we may add Starlink, and maybe we're using that a couple of months out of the year when we're in the Bahamas, and maybe we're just using the T-Mobile when we're in the United States. I'm not sure yet, but for right now we're going to stick with this T-Mobile system, and we're going to see how it does when we get to the Bahamas. Hey, well, today's project is I am updating our security system on the boat. Now, we have a security system currently that came when we bought the boat. It's, I don't know, 10, 15 years old. It works fine, and we're going to leave it because it's already hardwired in, and uh, it does a good job, except the camera quality is not that good. So what I'm doing is I'm installing a Simply Safe system, just a home security system. The cameras are much higher end. They're 1080p at least, and we're putting them on additional cameras on the, each side of the boat, as well as in the uh, lower helm here. And uh, the nice thing about it is the quality will be good enough so that if for some reason one of our, our regular cameras fails when we're docking or something like what happened to us recently where we hit, a, where we hit the rock wall at an island, uh, these cameras will be running all the time so that we can always get some kind of footage. So I think it's a good idea for the, for the channel, but it's also a good idea for the security of the boat. Now what I'm installing right now are cameras, but I am also installing a smoke alarm and we've got some water sensors I'm going to put in each of the bilges, uh, which will tell us, uh, in addition to our regular bilge sensors. The nice thing about this is there's bilge alarms in our boat now, but if I'm not on the boat and they go off, I'm not here to hear it. But with the new system, if the bilge alarm goes off, it's going to go to my phone, and no matter where I am, I'm going to know there's water in my bilge. It's part of a whole system that I'm doing. I'm also installing a Servo GX for our Victron system, which I'll get to probably either later in this video or maybe another video. But here are the, here are the components so far. We have these you know, typical magnet uh, connectors for the doors, just like they've had forever, except that these are battery operated and Bluetooth. So we do not have to worry about running wires. The system also comes with a keypad so that you can, you know, when you're entering and leaving, and also it's nice that it comes off the wall, you can walk around with it if you need. Uh, so this is what happens physically on the boat, but it goes to our phone, it goes to our computer, uh, any sensor that gets triggered uh, will automatically start recording, the cameras will go off if there's motion, and one of the nice things that this has that our old system did not have is the ability to tell it what type of motion we want it to detect. The problem with our current system is whenever it's on and the boat's rocking, we're at sea, the cameras are running and recording because they see the water moving. But we can set these cameras to not always uh, record what they see. For, for instance, if it's not a human, they have, I guess, some type of facial recognition software that they can tell it's not a human, don't record it. Or it's a pet, don't record it. So. We'll see how that works, but that's how they advertise it anyway. In either case, it's a major upgrade for us, and we're looking forward to getting it installed, and that's today's project. I hate putting holes in my boat. One camera. Smoke alarm. Other camera. 
the new camera is battery operated, and the battery supposedly lasts six months to a year, depending on how often uh, you're recording. It's connected with a magnet, which has got me a little bit concerned. It's good. I mean, it's it's it stays on there pretty good, but I imagine if we're really chomping in the ocean, this thing's going to come off. So um, we're putting them right outside the door. I just figure if the weather's bad, we just reach outside the door, take the camera off, put it in here into her back into the ICW or back into better what better weather. Um, so we'll see how that works out. Maybe you'll see a video in the future where I'm um, lamenting the fact that my cameras all fell off the boat and are floating in the uh, Atlantic Ocean somewhere. Right Offerings to the gods. But you know, hey, if someone knows a way to secure these better Well, I could get it where I want it and epoxy it. The problem is that you it's, it's, it's not it. as easy to take on and off and I'd have to, it, it can still come on and off, I'd have to twist it off, but we'll see, I'll play it by ear. They're like a 150 bucks each, so I hate to lose them, but well, let's see. see. Well, today I am installing a Servo GX made by Victron which is basically a control hub for our Victron inverter, our lithium batteries, um, and the solar charger is basically everything that has to do with our lithium system. And um, it basically it's a hub where right now I can monitor everything when I'm on the boat through Bluetooth, which either goes to my phone or goes to some uh, gauges that I have installed. But what this will do will also send all the signals out to Wi-Fi so that I can pick them up on my phone or an app or my laptop no matter where I am, which is important to us since we're now leaving our boat in Florida uh, quite often. And the other real nice thing about this is it also has inputs for me to hook up sensors for the fuel tanks, the water tanks, uh, even the, uh, the bilge alarms or the bilge pumps could be connected into this. And it will also send out alarms uh, to my phone wherever I am in the world if something goes wrong like that on the boat. So I think it's a really neat device. Uh, it's not particularly cheap. It's about 300 and some dollars but I think it's exactly what we need for the boat. It's gonna take me a little while to install it. I had to order a couple of different cables. Um, it takes some regular uh, network cables. It also takes some VE direct cables. There's a, and they give you a lot of little adapters. Well, anyway, I'll show you uh, as I install it. I'm not gonna do a complete rip it apart and show it to you. I'm sure there's lots of videos where they tell you all the details, but I'll at least show you what I'm doing on my boat and how I'm using it. Okay, well I have the Servo GX installed and in case you haven't seen the previous videos let me just briefly tell you how I've set up this system here. Now on both sides of this room here I have the lithium batteries. I have two on this side and two on the other side. They're 12 volts, 100 amp hours. I have them wired uh, to create 24 volts and both sets go to the bus bars that I set up over here, one positive and one negative. From say the positive, on the way to the positive bus bar, there is a 250 amp fuse, goes to the bus bar, and from the bus bar goes to this shutoff, main shutoff in case I need to kill, kill the power, and then from there it goes up to our inverter, which is the Victron Energy uh, Multi Plus uh, 24 volts. Now the negative comes into this bus bar over here. Uh, on the way to the bus bar though, it stops at a shunt, which enables us to monitor the voltage in the batteries. And then it goes to the bus bar, and from the bus bar, it again goes to the Victron. Now over on this side of the room, I have a solar charge controller, which regulates the power coming from our solar panels up on the flybridge goes to the solar charge converter. On the way out, there is a 50 amp breaker and shut off right there. That also runs down to the bus bar to help charge the batteries. Now I also have this solar charge converter that you see up front. That one is hooked up to our alternator on the port engine so that when I want, I can throw the breaker and um, shut off right there and I can use that to add voltage from the alternators to the batteries as we're underway. So again this runs to the bus bars as well. Now everything with the exception of this solar charger is connected up to the Servo GX. 
and the inverter is connected just with a regular uh, network cable. I had to get some, I think they're called VE Direct cables to connect the solar charger and the, uh, the battery shunt um, to the Servo GX. So that's all I'm going to connect for right now. It has the ability to connect various sensors, water level, fuel level, uh, temperature, things of that nature, which I'm going to add on to eventually. But I think that's it for this trip. We're running out of time and we need to get back to Pennsylvania sometime soon. Now let me go show you what it looks like on my laptop and what it'll look like on the tablets that we're going to have uh, up on the flybridge. And also we'll be able to monitor it from home. In fact, that's the main reason I hooked up the Servo. I had the ability to monitor these devices through Bluetooth when I was on the boat, but I wanted to be able to see it when I'm at home, when I'm out at a restaurant, and just monitor the boat at all times. So let me show you what it looks like on the monitor right now. Now this is what it looks like on the screen of my laptop, which will look the same on the phone or the tablets. And what you can see right now is that the, the red box is the input from the, uh, from the shore power, which I do not have connected now because I'm using the inverter. And you can see the inverter is powering the green box about 1300 watts. It is drawing power from the bottom left blue box, which is the battery uh, at 98%. It's uh, apparently drawing uh, most of the power there, I guess. And uh, the, the inverter is also being fed by the solar charger, which is the orange on the bottom, which uh, is connected to our solar panels. Um, and uh, I'm not sure exactly how it's going to look when I start hooking up fuel tanks and thermostats and things like that. Perhaps this box expands or there's another box. I'm not really sure yet. But this is a screen I'll have up running on a tablet on the flybridge next season. Now we are often asked how our lithium battery solar system is working out for us and the answer to that is great. We have 400 amp lithium batteries, we have the Victron uh, 3000 and we've got solar panels up on the roof and on a typical cruise, say six hours, we have enough power to run our refrigerators. We have two refrigerators, uh, actually three if you count the mini one, we have an ice maker, maybe Lynn makes some coffee, makes some toast and everything runs just fine for about six hours on the current system. If we need a little bit more power, what we do is we throw a switch and we allow the alternators off the port engine to charge the lithium batteries while we're underway, and that gives us another two or three hours. So altogether, we're pretty good for just about any cruise we do. Now, the only reason we might want to add maybe a few more batteries in the future is if we want to have more inverter power for, say, a longer period when we are at anchor, or, if we want to add a lot more batteries, if we want to run the air conditioning. Right now, if I try to run even one of the air conditioners, say the one that's in the master stateroom, we're going to run out of power in about an hour and a half because the air conditioner is going to eat up about 1600 watts. The pump eats up maybe about 400, so there's 2000 watts right there. And normally we're burning about 800 watts with all our refrigerators and ice makers. So you're looking at 2800 watts. We only have about 5,000 in battery capacity right now, so there you go. After about an hour and a half, we're, we're out of power. So I guess we want in the future, we may add other banks of battery so that maybe we can do that, but for right now, it doesn't matter. When we're at anchor, we usually want to run the air conditioner, especially at night, so we turn it on and it charges up all the lithiums while we're at anchor. Or if we go to dock, we're on shore power and we charge everything up and we repeat the process the following day. So right now we're extremely happy with the four batteries and the system that we have now. We'll see if we expand later, and if we do, I'm sure we'll make a video and we'll show you the results of that as well. Oh, Captain, my Captain, would you like some subliminal cookies? What are subliminal cookies? Oh boy, these are them. And these ones are particularly delicious. 